Texas is the best country in the world. <laughs> right? And if you don't believe me, you're wrong. So if you can't tell, I was born and raised in Texas, and I'm proud of it. And when you think Texas, you tend to think oil. It's become culturally synonymous with Texas. I think that's a pretty, a pretty good way to describe Texas, though. Uh, my dad's family's from Borger, Texas, and they worked in the oil refineries there. It was a dirty, nasty job, but it put food on the table. And we, as a society and as a culture, owe a lot of fuel sources a lot of credit. Coal, oil, natural gas. These pushed the Industrial Revolution forward. They made modern manufacturing possible. So where would we be without them? But now we've scaled, right? We've gotten crazy with how many people are using devices and energy. And we have this problem. Greenhouse gases are rampant, and it's causing climate change. And then in some local areas, you've got heavy smog and pollution. And this makes me really sad, because I am a typical Texan. I grew up hunting and fishing and being in nature. I have a deep connection to nature. And it kills me to see us ravage the earth, and we're not doing anything about it. And this is why I love wind energy, because wind is cleaner than oil. Shocking, right? But it doesn't make a lot of sense, because it's, it's pretty ugly, and it's really expensive. To show you this, let's take a trip west. Let's go to Amarillo. If you've never been there, it looks kind of like that. Okay, and out there we've got these big wind farms and wind turbines and they're turning and collecting a lot of energy. But these are huge and they're monstrous. You can't just plop one in University Park. Also, they're really expensive and to connect this to the grid is very, very expensive and that's really held development back. Okay, so it's still very true. But also, we're relying on wind for power, and when we need AC in the summer and the wind's not blowing, that's kind of a problem. But the single biggest reason why this is not a solution to this really large problem we're having is because the consumer has no power over wind power. You don't have any say on how many of these go up. So we're trying to save the world, but we're not consulting the people that live in it. That doesn't make sense. So the solution is not this macro view. It's what I call, and what other people call, microproduction. That would be consumerizing the production of energy, and it might look like putting some turbine on a house. Beautiful drawing. So my freshman year of college, I said, this is the future, and I'm going to change the world with it. Well, if you see in the lobby, you can see it's not going to change the world. Um, it's, I, I made this hack job, kind of Frankenstein-looking wind turbine. And it didn't really work, <laughs> but it inspired me to keep pushing the issue. And so I kept pushing and I kept working on this idea to bring wind energy to the home, and I learned the sad truth is it's not going to work under typical circumstances. You're not going to be able to push enough wind through a turbine that's yay big to make it pay off. So now it's still going to be ugly and it's not going to make any economic sense either. This killed me, because it's been a dream of mine for a very long time. And about two months ago, I'm at a conference, and I'm sitting in my hotel room in bed, and I'm thinking about wind energy and the consumer and how can we fix it, and then it hit me. Houses tend to have pitched roofs. And that moment, my brain flew out of my head and fell on the floor. So I scoop it up, and I start sketching. Well, <laughs> you think I'm crazy. <laughs> because, duh, houses have pitched roofs. So what? Well, when you design for what you already have, science tends to smile on you a little bit. So instead of taking something that's spinning in a field and putting on a house, that's going to work, we say, we have a house. How can we catch wind with it? OK, so this is going to be a really great picture, but uh, maybe it looks like this. Um, I promise it actually doesn't. It's much better looking. Um, so what does this do? What does the pitched roof do? 
It means that as wind flows up to this house, it's going to go up the roof and it's going to speed up at the turbine. And this matters because the power available from any section of air depends on the density of air, the area of the intake, and the velocity cubed. So velocity is very important. And little sidebar, fluid mechanics is messy. There's things called stagnation pressures. There's, um, there's all kinds of messy stuff that doesn't make this a perfect situation. But when I crunch the numbers, we see a two to four times overall increase in the power available with this method versus this method. So now, wind energy doesn't have to be a sacrifice anymore. With good industrial design and good mechanical design to pair, it can be really good looking and completely economically sensible. And that's why I'm working on it. And that's why I think this is the future. I have this crazy vision that Texas is going to lead the wind energy revolution. I buy it. <laughs> I have a vision of a wind turbine being the next home appliance on every home in Dallas, every home in Texas, and I guess from there I'll have to see where the wind takes me. Thank you.